Today we're going to be talking if Dylan Rayola is the future of Nebraska football. He has started his entire freshman year for Nebraska, and there have been highs, but there have also been lows. Dylan Rayola started the year uh, doing very well. He had the loss against Illinois, but that was a game where he threw three touchdown passes, nearly 300 yards, only one interception. But to me, the worst stat in that game was six sacks. And I wouldn't place all of those only on the offensive line. I think some of that, if I remember that game correctly, were Dylan Rayola issues as well. Some freshman mistakes and things like that. We are going to talk about the arguments against Dylan Rayola. Then we'll talk about the arguments for Dylan Rayola, and then we'll have a conclusion on what my thoughts are at the end. Dylan Rayola does struggle with inconsistency. Like I said, the first four games of the season, actually first five games of the season, things look good. Then you get into the Rutgers game, the bad weather. Uh, it was a game where he went uh, 13 for 27, 134 yards, zero touchdowns, one pick and four sacks. Obviously, you can blame it on the weather, but I think even with the weather in that game, that was still a game that left uh, Husker fans being concerned about Dylan Rayola. But you got the win, and so it's hard to be too concerned when you get the win. Well, the next four games, Dylan Rayola is sacked 10 times. Uh, they swap out their offensive coordinator. They're going something completely new, and things look better against Wisconsin. Right. I mean, he looks more under control. He looks like uh, he's running the offense better, better. looks like there's some more rhythm and stuff. But at the end of the day, you go back to the Iowa game. And I think everybody would agree that he looked a little bit lost in that game against Iowa. Now, it was on the road, hostile environment at night. I get that. But he's been starting all season long. You would hope to see some of that improvement. I think we did see some improvement throughout the year from Dylan Rayola, but I think you could argue there has been regression as well. Now, obviously, Marcus Satterfield was not a great offensive coordinator. Things went well for a little while, but eventually he didn't even know how many yards per play they were running. He had no idea to how to answer questions in the press conference, it seemed like. I mean, just basic questions, too. And so you have to wonder, was he stunting the growth of this young quarterback and I think that critics who want to say it wasn't just Marcus Satterfield it was Dylan Rayola as well have a bit of a point but you also look at it and you say how much should he be developed by the offensive coaching staff and how much should they be working on I think Matt Rule made the right decision to get rid of Marcus Satterfield bring in Dana Holgerson but at the end of the day uh th there are still issues with Dylan Rayola's pocket presence there are issues with him I mean a, a lot of people are just going to say Nebraska's offensive line stinks and they can't block somebody that's not what I've seen all season I've seen many good pockets from the Nebraska offensive line. And then there's been other times where I've seen D Dylan Rayola just be a bit nonchalant back there, maybe, uh, you know, stepping into throws where he, he he's running forward for almost no reason at all. It just kind of seems a little nonchalant. And I think some stricter coaching would really do him some good. I hope Dana Holgerson will bring that to him. I'm sure that's not his focus right away coming in as the offensive coordinator, but he really needs to find some of those mechanics and do a much better job of his technique and uh and what he's doing in those areas but at the end of the day Dana Holgerson comes in the offense looks better under him the Iowa game uh Dylan Rayola is holding the ball down by his stomach it's stripped the ball goes to Iowa Iowa kicks the field goal and you're left wondering how many more one score games is Nebraska gonna lose can Dylan Rayola be that guy and what hurts the most is that in this game it's it essentially was Dylan Rayola's fault there at the end that you didn't drive down the field that you didn't get a touchdown and I think that one of those that's one of the many reasons that you can say this is a fair debate amongst the fans is what is Dylan Rayola uh, or is Dylan Rayola the future for this program and should he be relied upon that way now the arguments for Dylan Rill. He's shown some really good flashes of brilliance. I mean, let's be honest. He's made some really good throws. He's made some really good plays. He's done good things with his feet. Even somebody who's not necessarily known as the most dual threat quarterback, being able to do that, it, it, it's inspiring to see some of the plays that he's been able to make. Uh, I mean, there, there are many people who would point out the throws that are just playing darts out there. I mean, that that look like the, the type of throws from 
only a five-star quarterback you might see. Heinrich Harburg are, is not making those throws. Other players are not making those throws. So you see the flashes of brilliance. You see the uh, the, the arm talent that Dylan Rayola possesses. And with that comes the potential of development, right? You see the issues and you say, okay, if we can get rid of the issues and we can uh, expand on those flashes of brilliance, we have something really special here. But is that something you want to work through and try to work on? Or do you want to bring in an already developed product to come into the Big Ten and have a big time opportunity? I'm not talking about Jeff Sims. I'm not talking about somebody from Georgia Tech. I'm talking about somebody who ha has played at a high level and who can be brought in and who can be a high level transfer for Nebraska. Now, obviously, I don't have a whole lot of options for that right now because we don't know who's in the transfer portal. Obviously, we'll know more from that once we get there. And I'm sure that we could come up with all kinds of different ideas of who the Nebraska coaching staff could go after and contact. At the end of the day, we just have no idea. So I want want to reserve that until we get into the transfer portal time and look into who is in the transfer portal. But at the end of the day, I have to believe that what Dylan Rayola possesses has better development potential than something you're going to find in the portal. Now, there are, don't get me wrong, right? There are guys like Will Howard that went to Ohio State that many people thought he he's just who he is, right? This is who he is, and nothing's going to change about him. And he gets to Ohio State, a fifty nine a career fifty nine percent completion percentage quarterback is now seventy six percent in his season, and he's broken the record for the most eighty percent completion percentage games in Ohio State history in a single season. Who would have thought a quarterback, a 59% career completion percentage quarterback from Kansas State could come to Ohio State and do that? Which really leads me to my point here is that even if you want to go the transfer portal route and bring somebody in who is a transfer portal guy, you still have to develop that guy. You still have to fit that guy into your system. And I think it is too soon for us to say, Dylan Rayola... Not that guy. Bring a different guy in. We have to give Dylan Rayola the time to develop, to get better, and for him to get a little bit more of that hard coaching that I think he needs, right? The don't be no, so nonchalant with the ball. The don't be running forward, uh, you know, kind of like aimlessly to throw the ball. Be a little bit better working on your technique, working on your form, and, uh, and get better about, uh, about your decision making as well. Now, normally with the young quarterbacks, you're worried about them being a little skittish back there. But there does need to be some, uh, some, what's the word? Uh, there does need to be some more urgency from him back in the pocket, trying to make plays, trying to get the ball out quicker in certain situations. The arm talent is there, and I think that that is what you look for to, to, to build things off of. And I think it's hard for fans to kind of recognize the full picture when you caught up in the middle of the season. Now, I know the season is over now, but there's still a bowl game to be played for, for Nebraska, something you have not been able to say for years. And so Dylan Mariola coming in as a freshman quarterback, doing that, Matt Rule trusting him throughout the entire season, you know, not going to Heinrich Harburg, uh, you know, bringing him in to start for a game or anything like that. I think you see the resilience of Dylan Mariola. I think you see him wanting to be great, not just to be great, but to be great at Nebraska. I think that's something that's very valuable. And Honestly, like I, th those two games that he played that were kind of his worst games were at Indiana and at Ohio State. And I know Indiana is not considered a powerhouse, and 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 yes, they are the number ten team in the nation. And, but some people are calling them fraudulent. That's still a good Indiana defense, and that was still a situation where Matt Rule was just trying to get anything and everything out of his quarterback. Sometimes it's just not your day. I kind of question Matt Rule's decision-making there, but at the same time, he was doing everything he could to try to get back in that game and win, so I can't fault him too much, uh, especially since he was just trying to uh, be hard on his guys and say, we're going to do this, we're going to get this. I think you could psychoanalyze that all you want, but at the end of the day, he played well against Nebraska, even though they lost, he played well against Illinois. I think you fix the pocket presence and you fix a lot of things, which is something that, like I said, is it, it's an issue for a lot of young quarterbacks. I mean, young quarterbacks who are starting their very, their first time, their, their senior year, 
struggle with pocket presence because it's just not something you can replicate in practice. It's not something that you can even have the fear of as much in practice because you don't have guys full on hitting you. You don't have guys full on trying to strip sack you and, and, and do all these things. As he plays more, as he gets coached more, he will improve he wasn't given that five star rating for no reason you see the flashes of the arm talent you see the flashes of the on the run throws and all that kind of stuff my opinion you have got to hold on to Dylan Rayola and I'm not saying there's rumors of him leaving or anything like that I just know the past and you know he transferred high school was three or four times he decommitted twice before coming to Nebraska I don't I mean I think he's going to stay at Nebraska obviously but you cannot give him an inclination of trying to move on because I do think Dylan Rayola is the future of Nebraska football. I do think that if Matt Rule gets things humming and he puts the right pieces around him, I do think you could see Nebraska getting a 10-win season and contending for the college football playoffs at some point. It's, it's very interesting to see how this will go moving forward. But if I'm talking to the fans, I'm saying just, just stay with Dylan Rayola. Stay with Dylan Rayola. He obviously has the talent. He obviously has the development potential. And you obviously have a much better offensive coordinator and Dana Holgerson now than you did before in Marcus Satterfield. He'll get him better. He will work with him. The pocket presence will improve. He just needs to continue to improve and develop and work and get better. It will be improved. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Join us on Saturday nights after the last Big Ten game for our Power Rankings episode. Sunday nights for our recap of the week. And then Thursday or, and then uh, Tuesday night as we preview the week coming forward. Things will obviously change a little bit for bowl season, but we'd love to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one.